reconcile us back to God. And I'm not going to put those scriptures up on the board this morning. But to reconcile, that word reconcile means be, to be made friendly again. God's not mad at nobody. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you give your life to Christ, you accept him into your heart, you confess him with your mouth, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will cause your spirit man to be born again. So when we come into this world, our spirits are dead because of the sin of Adam. But when we commit our life to Christ and receive what he did for us, then we are reconciled back to God and actually Christ brings us back to God and God becomes our Heavenly Father. We were once in the kingdom of darkness and now we're in the kingdom of the Son of God. So that we might belong to Him. I'm so glad I belong to God. He's my Heavenly Father and He's taken care of me for many, many years and I have wonderful fellowship and I know that you have fellowship with Him. Another reason that we would be with him immediately after death. I mentioned that a while ago. The minute a Christian stops breathing, his spirit just comes out of his body. See, we're spirit beings. I know we're not used to hearing that word, but I don't really see you. You are in that body. Your spirit man, the inner man. The Bible talks about the inner man, the spirit of man. And that's the part that is saved. When you give your life to Christ, your body is not saved at that moment. That will be saved in the future, at the resurrection. But your spirit man is saved, and that's why when this body quits breathing, then your spirit comes out of your body and goes to be with the Lord. Absent from that body, present with the Lord. Just like you're in this building right now. You walk out of it, you're absent from this building, but you're present in the outdoors. So it's simple, it's not complicated, and what I'm saying to you is all through the Scriptures. So as you study the Scriptures, you will see that. So that we would be with Him immediately after death. Another one is to rescue us from the final judgment. There's a judgment one day that every person will have to stand. Now, Christians stand at the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded by what they've done down here on the earth. But the unbeliever will be judged at the great white throne judgment, which is way back there in the book of Revelation, back in the back of the book. We will not have to stand at that judgment, but we will have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and we will get rewards for what we've done down here in these bodies. He also died to show his, his love for us. The Bible says no greater love that a man can have than for a friend for a man to die for a friend. And that's what Christ did. He died for us on that cross that we might have our sins forgiven and be born again. He died also that all of our sins are, uh, can be forgiven. If you're a Christian here today, you should not have a sin on you. If you do sin now, God has made provision. And that's in 1 John 1, 9. If, the little word if, you don't have to sin, but if you do, then you have a heavenly Father that says that He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness if you confess that sin. So every day I always check myself, and if I've done anything that I should have done or displeased God, I say, God, please forgive me. And then I receive His cleansing. So I walk in that cleansing of the Lord 24-7. He has fully justified us. That's why Christ had to die, to justify us in the sight of God. Justification means just as if you have never sinned. That's powerful. Just as if you have never sinned. So we don't have to be sin conscious. We can be righteous conscious now. The Bible says, He that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. To make us holy, blameless, and perfect, before God Almighty, to give eternal life to all who believe on Him, that we might die, uh, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. 
He purged us from our old sins. So all of our sins, when you come to Christ, I don't care what you did in the past, every sin is under the blood. Every sin is forgiven. And the Bible says they are removed from us as far as the east is from the west, and he does not remember them anymore. Now that's a good deal right there, you know. He does not remember what you did in that old life. The blood is so powerful that it cleanses us from all sin. So the first scripture that we're going to put on the board, uh, you will find in Romans 6. Let's start with verse 3, and we'll put that on the board. Chapter 6, verse 3. And Paul is speaking here. A powerful verse of scripture. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ. And I want, I want everybody to see that because some people don't realize that you are baptized into Jesus Christ. Now make sure you run that through your mind. You are, what does baptism mean? It means you are emerged. When I baptize the converts this morning, we are emerging them in water, which is a picture of us being baptized into Christ Jesus. Now, the next question is we want to ask, well, how did I get in Christ Jesus? God put you in Christ. If you read the Bible, you will see that those words, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. He puts all of us in Christ. Now, that's important to understand. So we are being baptized, or we were baptized into Christ Jesus. We're baptized into his death. Now, that's a powerful thought. So we were baptized in Christ Jesus, but we were also baptized into his death. So when he died, we died. That is our old nature, our old self died with Christ. And that's the picture that water baptism uh, tells us about. Uh, Roy, would you bring the cross over here and put it right here for me? Nothing like little illustration of things. Now look at verse 4. Let's put verse 4 up there. We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitly live and, be, and behave in newness of life. Very important scripture. I want you to look at it now. We were buried. Now in your mind... Here's what I want you to see. When did we die in Christ? When Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago, God put all of us. He knew we were coming on the scene, by the way. The Bible says that before the foundation of the world, he chose us to be his children. You know, we think we chose him, but he really chose us. And then we had to respond to that decision and say, yeah, Lord, I want you to be my God you chose me, and I choose you. Like two people getting married. You can, uh, the boy can choose the girl, but how many of you know she's got a part in it? Okay? So she has to choose him. So he chose us, and when we came into that knowledge that we were lost, we were, in, we were sinners, and if we died at that point, we'd end up in hell. But we saw the picture that he died for us. He bore our sins on himself that we might live. So... What we see here, we were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death, which was done really for us 2,000 years ago when Christ died and was buried. All right, let's put the next verse up there, verse 5. For if we have, be, have become one with him by sharing a death. Everybody say, sharing a death. Now, when did we share that death? When Christ died on the cross, even we, we weren't even thought of here by man, but God knew we were coming down the pipeline, okay? So let's look at that again. For if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his, and when did we share the death like him? When he died, we shared his death. God did away with that old Adam. He's gone, forgotten, buried. And then when we come out of the water, when Christ was resurrected, we were resurrected with him 
as, new, as a new create. What was resurrected with him at that point was our spirit man. Our spirit man was born again and was made alive unto God, and now we're new creatures in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And you have to see yourself like that now and reach out in faith and accept that by faith. Remember, everything in the Bible is by faith. You say, well, how do I get it by faith? How do I maintain it by faith? You believe God's word, and you accept it by faith, and you walk in it by faith on a daily basis, and don't let the devil talk you out of it. So, that's an important scripture. Let's go to verse 6. There's many things that we can know. Now, look at what Paul says. We know that our old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross. When was that old, unrenewed self nailed to the cross? Somebody tell me. 2,000 years ago. Say 2,000 years ago. Isn't that amazing? And you weren't even on the scene yet, but in God's mind, he nailed you to the cross with Christ. Someone says, well, why didn't God start all over again? He did. <laughs> he done away with your old self and brought you forth as a new self. You see that, okay? Was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin. See, our bodies are not sinful. Remember that. Our bodies are not sinful. They are instruments in which sin can express itself through, okay? But our bodies also express the righteousness that we have in Christ. So our bodies are instruments, either to do wrong or to do right, okay? And so as we walk with God now, remember these bodies are not sinful, and we are now to use these bodies for God to use for his glory, just like we used to use these bodies uh, for sin, now we use them to do righteous acts, okay? So, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. So, we're not slaves to sin anymore. Now, sin will knock at the door. Don't get me wrong. You get water baptized today, you walk out here, and you'll hear this knock. Who's there? Sin? Well, come on in. It's good to see you. I've missed you. Well, what are you going to say? No. You don't open the door. If a rattlesnake knocked on your door, Bob, are you in there? I just left town. <laughs> you don't have to open. Now, believe me, temptations will come. And temptations will knock. I don't care who you are. Preachers, Sunday school teachers. I don't care who you are. But you're in these bodies. These bodies are not sinful. But that old nature that came from Adam all the way down through daddy and mama and grandma and grandpa. All those people you thought were saints had to deal with that, all the way down to you. But what God did, he nailed it to the cross, okay? Um, let me give you a little example. Let's say th this is you right here. Doesn't that look like you? Hmm? Does that look like you? That's you. All of the old stuff in you, the old Adam nature, all of that stuff, sinfulness and everything. What God did, he brought Jesus Christ along. He took all of your sins and poured them in Jesus Christ. And now all your sins are gone, and they've been poured into Christ Jesus and nailed to the cross. And your old self is in Christ, nailed to the cross. And then God took all of Jesus' righteousness and holiness and poured it into you. Now you're righteous in the eyes of God. 
One hallelujah. <laughs> Two wouldn't be bad. <laughs> if you understand that, Christ is now in you and all of his holiness and his righteousness is in you. Put up on the board 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Let's look at that. For our sake he made Christ virtually to be sin. Now think about that. Who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endowed with, viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Now, I want you to put the King James up there. I think the King James is a little bit more, we're familiar with the King James version of that. For he had made him, now who is him? Christ, to be sin for us. Isn't that amazing? Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's what you call the exchange at the cross. We were over here, we were born into this world, sinners, passed down through the generations to our daddy and mom and to us. And when we were born into physical, we were sinful, we were sinners. And then as we move along in life, some people are saved at four years old. We have a young boy here this morning, four years old. He knows Jesus. See, it's done by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we have another gentleman a little older than four. But when God looks at them, he looks at them as total righteous. Where did they get their righteousness? From Jesus Christ. Remember what I said? God took all of our sins and poured them into Christ and took all of Christ's righteousness and poured it into us. So now if you're a child of God, you are righteous in the sight of God with the righteousness that was given to you by Jesus Christ. That's powerful. And I know that a lot of our teachings in the past, our minds have to be renewed in that area. But I encourage you to accept it and embrace it and thank God for it. For you can walk right into the very presence of God because you're clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The exchange was, so here I am lost. I'm bound to hell. And by the way, it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. And God has provided a way that we don't have to go to hell. Now, that's a good God. But sin had to be dealt with. There was a penalty. And Christ paid the penalty for us. I tell you what, if I owed somebody a million dollars, and you came up, and this guy, I owe a million dollars, and you come up and say, Pastor Bob, I'm going to pay that debt for you. How many of you know I wouldn't say, oh, that's okay. <laughs> How many would sort of get a little excited? Huh? Boy, I, let me tell you, you see one I'm an excited man here. And he whips out a million dollars and pays this guy that I owe and clears me of that debt. And I don't owe that million dollars anymore. I'm free from that debt. That's a good deal. Well, that's what Jesus Christ did. He came along and paid the debt that he didn't know. And I owed a debt I couldn't pay. And he paid it for me. So I saw my condition. I cried out to God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I confess it with my mouth that he's my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. At that moment, I passed through the cross. I died on this cross with Christ. All my sins was nailed to this cross. And I walk over here on the other side into the kingdom of God now with no sins on me. 
I am a new creature in Christ, born again from above, and it was all done for me through my Lord and Savior. That was the exchange at the cross. But we have to accept it by faith and believe it and receive it and then begin to walk in it and thank God every day. I'm a brand new creation. Remember, we used to sing that song. Melody, you remember that song we used to sing? I'm a brand new creation. I mean, to remember that song. You remember, you remember that? Some of you remember that. And you are. You are. Now, we look at you on the outside and we say, hey, you look the same on the outside. Not all together, because I tell you what, when people are born again, you can see it in their faces. But normally, the people that are not walking in the Spirit can't tell. But inwardly, the Spirit man is clean before God, born again, and will live forever with God. And that's what God did for us on Calvary. That's why we, we, we thank God for the cross. He paid a debt that he didn't owe. And brothers and sisters, we owed a debt that we could not pay. If I came up to you right now and I said, I've got a million dollars I want to give you, how many would reject that? How many would put out their hand? Let me see how you put your hand out. Let me see the smile on your face as I hand it to you. Huh? huh? Listen, now listen, that's exciting. And if you got a million, I'll take it if you want to give it to me. But I'm telling you something better than a million dollars. That million dollars is only good down here for a while. But I'm telling you something right now today. When you understand and comprehend what Christ has done for you on that cross, and I tell you what, he took us with him. And when he was nailed to it, our old man was nailed to it, all of our sins was nailed to it, and we step out over here when he was resurrected. Listen to this. When he was resurrected, we were resurrected with him to walk in the newness of life, and that's what water baptism shows the picture of, that we've been free from the old life and all the sins. God remembers none of that stuff again. Now, here's what you have to watch out for. Now that you're a child of God, you will have an enemy called Satan. He didn't bother you too much when you were doing your own thing over here. But now that you're a child of God, he'll come to you. He'll say, you don't really believe what that old man told you down at that church, do you? And now you say, oh, where did that come from? And that's why we encourage you to come to church, come to Sunday school, get into the Word of God and read it. Now remember, when you come to Christ, you're like a little baby. Did you know that spirit man is like a little baby? And this outward shell, this body, the sin that's in this body, will try to push your spirit around. And you're going to have to get into the Word of God and realize this is spiritual food that will feed your inner man. And your inner man can become so strong, literally, you can defeat sickness when it tries to come on you. So get into the Word each day, just like you eat physical food every day. Physical food is for these bodies. We have to keep these physical bodies fed. How many of you know if you don't, you get weak, and you get hungry, and then you get grouchy? <laughs> so, so you feed the outer man with, with you know, like, Little things like steak and potatoes, barbecue, ribs, fried chicken, butter beans, corn, squash, okra. What time did they open down there? <laughs> but you know that, that you have to do that. And if you don't, then your outer man gets weak and can make you subject to sickness. So you have to feed the outer man, the body, which is not sinful, okay? But the inner man needs food, and this is where the Word of God comes in. The Word of God is food for the inner man. And you might not understand it, but as you read it, God will open it up to you, and your inner man will get stronger and stronger. 
you will come into a greater knowledge of God. You will come into a greater knowledge of who you are in Christ. And you will have the strength to overcome the world of flesh and the devil. Also, the Holy Spirit now lives in you now that you're a child of God. And that's the beautiful thing. That's another privilege of becoming a Christian. God himself, his spirit, will come into your spirit and live in you and your bodies become the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he will guide you, he will direct you, he will strengthen you, he will encourage you, he will lead you, and you can have tremendous fellowship with the Holy Spirit every day of your life. I have some of the most wonderful experiences with the Holy Spirit in my life. When I'm cutting grass, I mean, I am fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Whatever I'm doing, I'm aware of His presence. And if somebody is here that you don't know the, know the Lord, we'll have somebody here this morning that you can talk to, and they will share Christ uh, with you, and you can become a child of God as you put your faith in Christ. Okay, uh, Rachel, you're going to come up and you sing, and then uh, Steve, you'll come over here, go in that room, and uh, where's the, yeah, and, and go back there, and Rachel will sing as we get ready for the water baptism. Praise the Lord. And somebody, of course, will move the pulpit and put the flowers down, and I'll bring this over here. See, the devil didn't know because he don't believe the truth. We just got a simple cut through right here. I can reach right in there too, Joshua. He don't like the truth, so he didn't realize that. But we're here today to, to commit these uh, two to through their sh uh, show of obedience through baptism. And you know what? I want to say this. Even if I wasn't able to make it today, Joshua would still be doing this today. If his mom wasn't here today, he'd still be doing this today. If his grandma wasn't here, see, because it's not for us, it's for him. See, we're not proud parents to go, well, if I can't be there, we won't do it. Do not hinder the move of the Holy Spirit when it's moving in people's lives. Even at four years old, I am not a foolish man that I'm going to hinder the Holy Spirit movement in his life. But the blessing still came that I'm able to be here. So we'll get on with it. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Joshua, have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Yes, sir. You believe He lived, He lived and died on this earth to save you for your sins? Yes, sir. Yes. And today you're going to show the congregation here your obedience in His faith by water baptism. Yes, sir. How do you know you're saved? I ask God in my heart. Simple as that. As simple as that. All right, well, let's do this. Okay. On the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ, buried with Christ, risen to walk in the newness of life. Father, thank you, Lord, let your power rest upon you. Right now, fill him with the precious Holy Spirit. Yes. Give him wisdom for each day, Lord. Yes. And thank you, Father, for what you did for him. In Jesus' name, and I cut and break all the way back to Adam. Yes. Every curse, everything yes. that came down the family line, yes. loosen him from it based on the shed blood of Christ. He's free, and it's a new day, a new walk, and we thank you now, Holy Spirit. You will direct him and guide him throughout life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow. Yeah. Amen. amen. Say hello. 
Hello, everybody out there. <laughs> Howdy. Steve McComas, you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, sir. Have you accepted him into your heart? I have. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I do. Then the Bible says you are saved. Wow. I'm going to turn this way. My son, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, buried with Christ, risen to walk in the newness of my Father, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I fall in my cup and break all curses, all the way back to Adam, in the name of Jesus, through the shed blood of Christ. He is free. He's a new man in Christ. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And we thank you now. Now fill him with the Holy Spirit right now. He receives by faith that fresh filling of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Father, for filling him for power that he might be that witness and to walk each day communing with you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Woo. Let me say one more thing about my son-in-law here. We were talking back this. We, we were changing our clothes. He said, when you were talking about riding on the lawnmower and talking to God, that's what I've been doing. Having fellowship with God every day and riding the lawnmower, whatever he's doing. He's having fellowship with God and just sharing his heart with God and communion with him. And I tell you, as a young Christian, he's picking it up fast. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'd love to give you a good hug. Here, Sarah. Yeah. Look at Miss look at Miss Susan back there. Way back in the back. She was missing nothing. Your precious daughter, my granddaughter. Woo! Okay, you got your pictures taken? All right. I don't want to get out. Yeah, you, you, you don't you don't want to get out? That feels good. It feels good. Man. Brand new man. Oh boy. Woo! Glory to God. If you haven't been water baptized, if you haven't committed your life to Christ. Do it, you know, and uh, get on the far line for God. Amen. Love all of you. Appreciate all of you. And uh, this is pretty nice in here. I don't think I want to go in. <laughs> anyway, you can stand to your feet and turn to somebody. Somebody want to say something? Who, who wanted to say something? Uh, missing anybody? All right. Give him the mic. Really want to say something. Oh, you want to take up? You going to take up more money? <laughs> Anybody else want to say anything? All right. God bless you. Turn to somebody. Talk to them. Tell them you love them in Jesus' name.